I asked all uh, participants, professional musicians, I don't know if you remember, you said last time that uh, you should listen to, to classical music on your, on your free time, because for you, classical music is always work. No, not exactly work, but it engages my mind in an active way. So, mm -hmm. what, what it means is when I'm on a car trip, actually, it's really good to listen to classical music for me, and and especially things that I'm playing because it stimulates me and it keeps my mind awake. But if uh -huh. I want to relax, it's not the thing for me to listen to. I mean, some things maybe. Actually, you know, the box suite with Whistle Away or Bills of Playing, that would probably be relaxing for me, but that's also how I feel when I play them. So, but, okay. um, generally, to relax, I would not listen to the box suite because it, 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 my mind gets active, and that's not a, what I'm looking for. <laughs> Uh, no, I know. Uh, uh, how about you, Anna? What kind of music, do you, kind of music do you listen to? Uh, I mostly listen to Israeli pop, believe it or not. No, I do believe it. Yeah, well, you saw, you saw what I said. I'm sorry? Not current pop. Sorry? Not current. No, not necessarily current. I mean, unless there's something new that I heard that is... Uh, really good but uh it's songs that were current when i was growing up in the 70s and later 80s and uh by the 90s i've left israel already the early 90s so then things started uh uh I, I was adding less of music but it was still some new music but uh, yeah, mostly the 70s and the 80s and something from the 60s from before I was born, but not much before. And it's exactly the same thing as uh, as Rachel. When I listen to classical music, even if it's something I, I don't know at all, and especially if it's something I do know really well, uh, I don't know if it's exactly like Rachel, but uh, it's similar. The mind is very active. I analyze it from a very uh, uh, performer point of view. And it doesn't really give uh, the calming effect. The okay. Of just letting go. And actually, the interesting thing, though, I mean, all the pieces that I sent you are, and the song, are songs that I know, those are things that I know currently that if they came on the radio or if my iPod shuffled into them, I would never skip ahead and I would never stop and often I would hit the repeat button. For various reasons, some of them I don't even know and I'm not sure I haven't verbalized exactly why. But that is uh, the feel that I... That's what I like when I listen to music, and uh, I do have a lot of long car rides, uh, so that's usually what I end up listening to when when I run when I when I run out of car talk podcasts. <laughs> okay, reminds me when I used to live in uh, I lived most of my life in Italy. Uh -huh. And, uh, well, I had businesses a little bit uh, around the globe, but uh, when I was in Europe, I decided that the best way to go is by car. And uh, what do you do when you drive for six, seven, eight hours, go to a meeting, sit in a meeting for two hours, and then drive That's back right. to yeah. either home or another place? And I... Uh, convince myself that I can build up something that I would like to listen to again and again and again. Uh -huh. uh, and the reason I stopped traveling so much is uh, I couldn't make up my mind uh, what to put together. So I'm uh, talking so much because I have a problem here with the, with the music. It's one of those evenings, of course. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I'll. What I'll do is I'll 
just a minute. I'll just take this off. Uh, okay, here we are. Okay. Okay. Now. Uh, in, in my server, so thank you. Rachel will be so, right back. Okay, I was going to ask her about her choice. And uh, the, the first choice, no, but we'll, we'll wait for the tea. I mean, uh, I hope she brews some for everybody. Well, the thing I see. The thing is, the difference, the main difference between Rachel and I is about three hours. I wake up three hours ahead of her, and my battery runs out three hours ahead of her. <laughs> so that's the thing. I have the two young kids, so I'm I'm holding on to dear life right now. <laughs> okay, well. Then, I mean, like I would yawn in the middle of some slow movement on stage. I, not through the uh, capricci you didn't no well that's that's the one thing that uh at least uh through the caprices uh there's a lot of energy i actually don't yawn on stage you know adrenaline kicks in and it's really not uh not a problem i think we lost well, Adriana for a while okay yeah. well while we are waiting for uh, the tea to brew, uh, do you know what tea you're going to have? Yeah, Lipton Yellow Label. Ah, Very think to go. No, no, it's, uh, it's the think to go. Try the Lipton breakfast tea, that's even better. Yeah. Uh, my uh, my taste, actually, I don't know. It's not actually so fancy, it's just... Uh, Okay. It's the case uh, of childhood that I suddenly rediscovered after years of trying twining. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you know what? I just love this simple tea. Mom's apple pie, that kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'd suggest that we all mute ourselves as we're going to listen to Chet Baker and his interpretation of My Funny Valentine. Uh, this is the original one. He did it again five years later, but this is the original one. So, here goes.
That was uh, Funny Valentine. It's Chad Baker. By the way, Rachel, I don't know if you're familiar. You're probably familiar with the uh, um, Bill Evans version. That's another beauty. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Jonathan, you are actually a work immigrant, aren't you? A work immigrant? <laughs> this is the nice, politically correct way of uh, calling people that are un. Are Uh -huh. I have those uh, problems with the computer again. Uh, so, I don't know, if, can you hear me at all? Yes. Now we can, yeah. Okay. Because uh, all of my three computers died on me. <laughs> so, it's just, I, I don't know if I did anything. I promise I'm not going to do it again. Just interest me out of here. Anyhow, let's see. Okay, uh, it's uh, uh, the problem is with the music. Okay. We are losing possibility to. Uh, you cannot see me, right? You can only hear me, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll try and do something about that in a second. But. Uh, very stupid. I, I have no idea why it happens. It never happened before, of course, but it's all the first time. It's you, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Drinking tea. But no, I can. I, I know you can see me, but I can't see you. I have. Uh, I have just a little silhouette. What kind of biscuit? Biscuits? Oh, he must have these frozen things. What was that? He's asking about your tea and your biscuit. Oh, the tea and the biscuit. The biscuit's gone, and the tea, I'm just waiting for it to actually reach a digestible temperature. Okay. 
<laughs> the little uh, the little sip I took surprised me with its intensity. Okay, hopefully the computer is going to be friendly again. Uh, we'll be able to hear the uh, the music. But the music is only on one of the computers. I mean, uh, I never thought that I'll have a crash right in the middle. I, I just don't know why. Ah, yeah, I see the crash. It tells me this window is recovering from a problem. If I'll be quiet and nice, it will let me go on. Um, why did you choose my family Valentine, uh, Rachel? Uh, I chose that one for, for a bunch of reasons. One, that recording is taken in a way that is so close to his voice, you feel like you're right next to him. To the, I mean, you feel like you're right here and you can hear everything. The other thing is the the quality of his voice is unmistakable. You know, that's something that these days is rarer to find a voice in any kind of instrument that is so um, unmistakable. Uh, and the mood of the song just at the moment that I was choosing it hit me. <laughs> so, and it's something that I listen to a lot anyway. It's, you know, it's there's much later in life. Pardon? Much later in life. Almost before he died, as a matter of fact. You mean that recording? No, no. The famous no. one? He made another recording where he was singing. Yeah, I meant the one where he is singing, actually. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, that's that's the one um, that I listen wow. that I listen to the most often. Very sad. Yeah, it's really melancholy and uh, kind of. I don't know. I relate to that mood <laughs> sometimes. It's uh, well, the, the, that recording. I I, I didn't put that on. That one on. I don't know why I thought you wanted this one. But this is the original one. This is the one. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, that's also the one I had. Uh, but the other one I, I listened to on TV, they had a program. Well, they have every Thursday on um, on uh, not on art, uh, on the other one. Oh, here we are. I'm back. You are? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it sounds better now. I can hear you better now. The program, you mean the other station, is it Mezzo? Yes, yes. Every Thursday night on Mezzo, they have, uh, they have a, a, a film about the jazz mm -hmm. protagonist, and uh, they had one about uh, Chet Baker, and... Uh, it was going from uh, being kind of uh, unhappy to deep melancholy, and it was, but it was him, you know. It was uh, the way he was living and everything else. Uh, yeah. I have to do this and this, and now please don't die on me. Okay. Okay. Now you can see me, I guess. Yes. Okay. Okay, so well, we're going to hmm, yes, we're going to get this organized now, just run through the music again. Wow, there's a lot of echo. Can you hear the echo? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll mute this one. Is this better now? You should look behind to see if Freddy Krueger is not. <laughs> it's very uh, scary echo. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. It's very mysterious, isn't it? I, I also see that there's a problem with... Uh, I think, guys, that I'm going to finish this off because I have... I, I, I'm afraid we won't be able to neither hear the music nor... I'm, I'm not even sure that we're going to be able to run this because of this computer problem. Yeah, there's a lot of technical issues today. Yeah. Um, well, there's always a, a first time. We had a an evening three weeks ago. I don't know if you're familiar with a guy called Roberto Gini. He's ringing the bell, yeah. They're right? No, he's a cello player, Viola da Gamba. Viola da Gamba. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's a very, very interesting person. And uh, we had a fantastic evening. And then <laughs> in the beginning, it was all running well. And about half hour into the recording, into the event, we started getting this static noise. And uh -huh. the, there was no, there's no way to understand why. And it was just terrible. I mean, it was. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to see here. I know what I'll do. I'll. Uh, well, we'll get a one more try, seeing that we're all sports-oriented people. Uh, I'll get this off. <laughs> sports-oriented. No, no, I, Sports I, 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 I think right now in the only orientation I would have to export because there's a big screen TV in front of me. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. I'll tell you about TV. I mean, in the in the flat where we are. Uh, 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 I've inherited. A virus, and that's why it's uh, it closed down. So it is okay now, I hope. I don't know. Uh, apropos TV, we, <laughs> we have four huge TV screens in the house. And, uh, well, first of all, I have no idea how to work them. Uh, it takes about half an hour every time when I try to do anything with them. And uh, the second thing is, if there's not, yeah, if it's not mezzo or, or something, there's nothing to listen to, is there? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, so I mean, uh, mezzo I like because. Uh, Okay, let's see if we can. Uh... Metro has some very interesting stuff, actually. It's a very, it's a channel that unfortunately you will not find in the states or in Canada. No. No. It's fantastic when I saw the the things that are on it. I was very, uh, very envious. Well, they have the whole month mm -hmm. of opera. from uh, Salzburg, mm -hmm. and uh, incredible, incredible. I mean, uh, they had the uh, um, magic flute and uh, mm -hmm. Cosi Fantuti, and, uh, but in a very, very interesting and very 
Sí, well performed, very well performed. Yanatan, it's your time. Tell us about your blue dream with the Rami Fortis. Let me tell you something about uh, the songs I listen to. The words, I don't pay much attention to them. I connect to the okay. music, first of all, through harmony. And then through the tune as it is projected, I find, from the harmony. And then, of course, the rhythm. The rhythm with me comes a little third, which is interesting because it's such a strong beat. Uh, the words, I, I, I would need to actually read them, even though I listen to this song many, many, many times. I don't think I actually process them because it doesn't seem to matter <laughs> somehow. So what I like about this song, I mean, this is somehow a, a singer that in the background where I came from, if, if he ever by accident came on the radio, my dad would turn it off. Okay, and also that's a good reason to listen to. Well, I don't know if I get to that, but I once heard the song. He had, his songs were very, you know, heavy rock at some point. And suddenly he came out with an album that was very more audience friendly. But I wouldn't say, you know, he started sounding like uh, a folk singer. Uh, but there was something a little more, the sound, and uh, again, like the choice of harmony were much more easy, much easier to digest. Okay. And and that song, for some reason, every time it comes up, there's something so powerful about it. It sounds extremely loud, even when it's not loud. Something about the color and the rhythm and just the the instrumentation and, and the spacing of the harmonies, just the whole thing is just from beginning to end is a rush. And I, every time I hear it, I would hear it, and usually, like I said, I, I would hit the repeat button and hear it again. <laughs> okay. There's something, in the same time that they, they, it's so gruff, it's extremely clean and polished. They, especially the, instru the instrumental part of it behind. I mean, he has kind of a, you know, you know what we call it. His voice yeah. is not exactly a <laughs> Chichi Sertong choir boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but somehow it sounds so clean, like everything is in place. And there's something that I like, and you know, part of the reason I like Bach so much is that the music with Bach is really as close to a well-cut diamond as one can get to. There's not one note that doesn't perfectly fit in there. And there's not one place in Bach that they would say, ah, that was not great writing. It's always perfect writing, as far as I'm concerned, of course. I, no, I can only not, concur with that. I, I, I know people are like saying, why are you mentioning it in the same breath? Of course, it, it works on completely different levels. But that song, there's nothing in there that I would think could have been done even slightly differently. It's just everything hits. So we're going to listen to Rami Fortis in Blue Dream. Uh, please, if everybody would please. Mute your oh, mute the mic, yeah.
the words are oh, really fantastic. outstanding. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> such poetry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding you tight every day and you. It's like being on an ongoing honeymoon and you hold me tight as a snake. <laughs> okay. Well, it's really let's... interesting. I remember when someone said on the radio that the Israeli songs have gone a really long way from Paul <laughs> Simula de T. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I see that we are left to our lonesome. Yeah. Uh, everybody left us. So let's have fun. Uh, what I'd like you to tell us, Rachel, well, tell me, tell, and tell Yohanathan, you might have told him already, uh, about the chorus girl. <laughs> I'm you too. Um, this, is, oh, sorry. Um, this is a song on a new album by Stephen Page, who's a Canadian um, singer-songwriter. I don't think he wrote this one, but I really love his version of it. And it's one that when I first heard it, I put it on repeat for about half an hour. <laughs> and just kind of, and he's just, he's such a versatile and talented person. I've heard him now sing all kinds of different music. We just did a program in Toronto of all different types of waltzes from Strauss to Shostakovich to waltzes in, in folk and pop music and rock music. And he did, he was singing and you know just I incredible uh, uh, intensity and focus in someone who sings pop music which we think of as you know lighter but they're you know there's so much focus and um, importance that they they give to the music too in a different way but I actually uh, was very surprised when I listened to it the first time because it, it, it kind of starts off as something you listen to in the church. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it didn't work together with the idea of the chorus girl, but uh, maybe it does. So here we go, mute, and the chorus girl comes on.
<laughs> so I was the I was the only one listening to the music. Yeah, yeah I think so. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, it's one of those crazy evenings. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry about that. I I was sure okay. that. Uh, it's all Gaddafi's fault. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, what is really surprising about that is uh, that I don't know, it says here zero of three attendees are done. It means nobody is done. Wow. All right, it looks like uh, we have to give up here because uh, I, I have no idea what's happening. I wanted to listen to well let's talk a little bit about uh, your programs uh, so what is the music that you're going to play in uh, Hamilton we are playing five pieces I don't remember the order but it's going to have the Handel Halvers and Pasakalia uh, the eight duos by Reinhold Lier, the duo by Paganini, which we mentioned earlier, the first one, the Honegger Sonatina, and uh, finally the Schulhoff duo. Wow. And how many times are you going to perform it? How many times? Well, at this point, we have this one program, but I think we will definitely uh, look at opportunities to repeat it. Uh, it's okay. a little tricky to get our schedules to work. Uh, uh, so we're very lucky to be able to, to do this, actually. Mm -hmm. And what are the individual programs for the future? Oof. We both have a lot, a lot of stuff. Uh, let, let me look on my website and see what I have. <laughs> well, one thing we're both doing is we're both doing Bach cycles this summer. Yeah. Uh, oh, really? Not together, but in separate um, places. And we're also going to be playing together this summer um, at a Paris festival Town. in Perrytown, which is in Ontario, and in Ottawa. Uh -huh. And then he, he has other summer festivals. Uh, we we have separate summer festivals. Right. Uh, I have been work from about end of June through the beginning of August, but I also have some time off, which is not what I had last summer. Okay. But what what back cycles are you talking about? Oh, the uh, complete uh, and company. For wow. violin, it's this and others, and for keys and for cello, the six cello suites. Wow. And are you going to record them? Uh, no, not at this point. Uh, but he already he them. already has them all on YouTube because he played them all in one afternoon. One. Yeah, I did it so uh, on uh, in a live concert. But at some point, it, I will record it. I, I see. You did all the uh, Sonata and Petita? Yeah. Hey, you thought the Paganini was something. This is, you know, <laughs> no, this six is hours of. Uh, this is impossible. Hours. You know that uh, Salvatore Cardi yeah. recorded, I, I think I told you, he recorded a, a Paganini concerto a day. Right. And uh, everybody was going crazy because, I mean, how can you? Yeah. Every day record one, and you, you're doing the whole Sonata and Partita for violin? Yeah. Wow. Well, the way it's divided is uh, I do it in three acts, so to speak. Okay. So I put a Sonata and a Partita in each act. And then take a couple of hours between them. It took one hour. I took one hour. Well, one day I took one hour, then I did it somewhere else where I did it over two days. I did it in an evening, an afternoon, and another evening. It depends also on the presenter. And for example, this summer I'm going to do it in Ottawa. Same, same idea, one day, but maybe two hours in between each. 
and then right away the next couple of days I'm doing it in Kalamazoo in Fontana but I think he wanted in two concerts which are going to be he, wants, he says he wants to look and see what would be the best depends on the venue and right and uh, you know we'll see I think the idea of pairing two of them in a you know uh, intermission less program makes it really interesting and the intermission end up happening between the concerts, so to speak. I think it's, I mean, it's a marathon for the listener, too. It's not just yeah. you know, to be able to concentrate. Yeah. If there's more than two in a program, it's probably... It's probably too heavy. And with all due respect, I think the musical impact of these pieces is, uh, I mean, I don't want to even mention the Paganini in the same breath. It's a no, no. I mean, you can't compare. But uh, I can listen to all the Bach in one day. I don't know if I can do the same with Paganini. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. I don't know. It's a it's well, you don't have to listen. You just have to play it. It's okay. Oh, no. You have to <laughs> But, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm thinking it is a good thing that 24 comes at the end because if it was another Caprice, famous, <laughs> who knows if you know if you actually can hold the audience or not. Well, let me tell you something uh, about the Bach, the violin. Uh, I had two years of traveling in the car, and I would choose. Uh, let let me see. Well, I think that at the end of the day, my number one performer was uh, Yasha Heifetz, and then it was I think it was Milstein, who for a long period of time <coughs> was my god because his music was so pure. You know, there was no. Uh, he was, he never got excited. He never got uh, and uh, I must confess that I did not go crazy about uh, Perlman. No, it's a little too it's too, it's too, too much vibrato. I mean, why it's why? Too rich. It's uh, way over the hill. Do you know the Yonis Souk? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one I grew up with, and I think it's terrific. Well, Kagan also did a fantastic uh, job on that. But uh, no, Yodasuk is. Uh, and uh, Fabio Biondi told me that uh, when he was a child, there was a new recording, and I couldn't find it anymore, mm. done by uh, Sharing. And you recording? Well, when he was, you know, uh, when he was uh, born, I think something like that. Uh, but, I, have, uh, I have the sharing recording. At seventy-eight or what? Or seventy-eight? I don't know. I have something by sharing. I look. I didn't know there was more than one. Sharing did well. Sharing did the uh, Paganini concerto. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I even have Bach, right? yes, but he said Fabio said that he had well that when he was born, uh -huh. his mother was listening to one day Paganini, one day Bach, but all by sharing. Oh. I, I I couldn't find the Bach sharing. I have the the Paganini concerto number four. Oh no, I have the uh, I have the Bach. I have the complete box. Really? I really? Don't know if it, yeah, I just, I don't know. You said it's 1978, so I have to look and see what year it is. No, this, uh, the, the box was much earlier. Yeah, I have to look. I mean, I don't know if he recorded it once or more than once. It's possible because his, uh, you know, his... He was reinventing himself all the time. Yeah, yeah the thing with Shaving is that he was considered kind of the standard, the golden standard in the box, because yeah. the music was very, uh, how should I say, trait free, in other yeah. words. And, and that's in the way, I mean, that's what they said in that movie, The Art of Violin, I guess with some 
a little malice uh, that, you know, if you opened the radio and heard very good playing but couldn't tell who it was, it was sharing. <laughs> <laughs> because it was kind of uh, not, it was not distinct. He didn't have this distinct sound. And it's interesting, I, I, I heard him, of course, very old. Yeah. Uh, and it was still very high standard. Extremely high standard. It wasn't something you would say, oh, he's over the hill. It seemed like he lived on top of that hill. But, you know, if you listen to it, it's, it's not fascinating. It's just really good. But I, 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 I like, again, I compare it to soup. And there's so much more humanity and, and content in what soup presents. Yeah. Without, without actually trying hard, just something in the communication. And you, Rachel, is this your first time with the unaccompanied cello? Oh, I did. I did it once before, um, but this will be more. Uh, that, that was in an, in an afternoon at a gallery where people could kind of an art gallery where people could kind of come in and listen a bit and then leave. So oh, now, okay. it, now it's going to be in proper formal concerts with three three per program. But I think with the cello suites, because each one's character is so different and their lengths are also different, that if you have three in a program, you can actually kind of balance it out so that the the mood does change throughout the program. It's, I'm not saying that the violin ones are not like that, but, but it feels more balanced somehow <laughs> with, the, with the six of them. Well, they are... Some fantastic piece of music. Yeah, um, I mean, I've I've gone to listen to cello suite cycles, and I know that I just kind of you can just kind of lose yourself in the sound and just enjoy the sound for two hours, which which is, I mean, I get told uh, every day walking around in the city how the cello is someone's favorite instrument, so I imagine it's nice to listen to for two hours. <laughs> well, I the. The six cello suites for me, uh, uh, I don't know, every time I, I live, I, I must say that I stopped listening to uh, Rostropovich, who for a time I loved. Mm -hmm. And I do not like the way Yo Yo Ma plays them. Mm -hmm. But I always come back to Mr. Paul Kandals. Oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. You know, again, it's as if he plays it with no intention to uh, magnify anything. It just gives you net music, and, uh, and it drives me to tears. I must say, it's. Uh, I heard him play. Uh, I think it was number six. Uh, one week before he died, he was ninety-seven years old. He couldn't walk. He couldn't do anything. He just <laughs> put a cello in his hand, and all of, all of a sudden he was alive. Eh? Anyhow. So, well, I think we're going to call it tonight. Although we I have some we're, we're collapsing here, even though for you yeah. it's much earlier, <laughs> later, kind of. Nah, for me it's only uh, five thirty-seven in the morning. Right. Yeah. But with your permission, I would like to. And this uh, with the Rachmaninoff, uh, if that's okay with you. Sure. Uh, who who's performing, by the way? It's not the one that you you have. No, it's the one you sent me. Then it's me. <laughs> we don't have, it's okay. <laughs> okay, we'll find out. I didn't even listen to it. Uh, I have all the uh, Rachmaninoff with uh, Rostropovich, who was doing a fantastic job on them. But we'll, I don't know which one it, this is, so here goes Rachmaninoff. Can you hear it? No. <laughs> <laughs> 